The top law enforcement official in Texas is giving the first public update into his agency's review of the police response to the Uvalde school massacre. Colonel Stephen McGraw, he's testifying right now before the Texas Public Safety Commission. He had been expected to offer the most ex extensive and revealing remarks yet about what really happened that day when 19 students, two teachers were killed and police had been called to save them. Seen in Shimon Prokopes is in Austin, Texas, watching all of this. So, Shimon, what have you? What are we learning? What has been said so far? Well, I think the most painful part, truly, and really, every time we hear from these families, it just gets more and more painful. And sitting inside that room and listening uh, to these families, like Brett Cross and uh, some of the other family members who spoke about the pain they've been going through, which has been doubled and tripled and really uh, constant because of what they feel have been lies and misinformation and no transparency. And here today they have their moment to go face to face with the head of this largest state law enforcement agency, the leading law enforcement agency which has been running this investigation, which has been in charge of releasing information, withholding information, giving out wrong information. And you could just feel the pain and see it on these family members as they stood there and faced uh, the head of the DPS, Steve McCraw, uh, with their complaints and their issues of how divided uh, he has made their community, how the information has just created, the bad information has created more pain. He, of course, is defending uh, himself. He, he did offer one apology, but he's defending himself. He's defending his agency, uh, as he's been doing throughout this entire incident. Take a listen to some of what he told the family members. You're right. If one of our four values is accountability, accept responsibility, plain and simple. And I did make that statement to CNN. And I can tell you this, you know, if DP as an institution, as an institution failed the families, failed the school, or failed okay, the community of Duvalde, then absolutely, I need to go. But I can tell you this right now, DPS as an institution, okay, right now, is did not fail the committee, plain and And Kate, of course, there he's talking about uh, his remarks to us. You know, when I had uh, questioned him about in October or so, uh, we found him at a, at a hearing uh, some five hours from Uvalde. We went and tracked him down to question him about something. And in that questioning, I, I said to him, would you resign if any of your officers were to be held responsible, culpable? And he said he would. We now have several of DPS officials who have come forward, uh, who have been shown to have some kind of lack of action here. And despite him saying that he would resign if any of that was to happen, he's now kind of being cute here today by saying, no, 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 what I meant was as an institution, if we failed, I would resign. So it doesn't seem like he's heading in that direction. And of course, for today, I don't think this is going to be enough for family members who are still demanding more answers, more transparency and accountability, Kate. And a true and truly a full accounting of what really happened and hearing that there still haven't been given and that is not what is coming out today is not going to be enough for the families who that's really at their core what they're asking no for. Way. Shimon, thank yeah. you so, so very much. Shimon will be there as we continue to follow this. I do want to play, as we heard from Steve McGraw, let's hear from some of the families who spoke, as Shimon was just describing, and very emotionally this morning before the commission. Listen to this. You, sir, have told lies. You're not in control of your officers, nor are you the leader this great state deserves at the helm of what was once known as one of the best law enforcement agencies. You have disgraced the state, your position, and the people. Regardless of the election, I expect the terminations and your resignation immediately. We've been in Austin. We've met with Governor Abbott. No action was taken. We're not going to stop. We're going to keep going. But again, this isn't who we are. This isn't, this isn't who we want to be. And that is just and that is just some of the emotional testimony. Once again, families having to go ha families having to go before and lay their emotions on the table to describe what their what their how their lives have been shattered. You're looking at pictures there of Jackie Casares because right now joining us is Jesse Rizzo. He's the uncle of Jackie Casares, who was one of the 19 fourth graders killed in Robb Elementary School that day. Jesse, thank you so much for coming out to speak with me. You spoke just now before the commission. 
You called for Steve McGraw to hand in his badge. What was your message today? My message is basically to hold him accountable, to, to illustrate what he has created to our com with our community, with our, with our friends, our family, you know, people that we see each other at the grocery stores. But I wanted him to understand his comments and, and, and the comments of his staff, what kind of division he's created in our little small community. That, that's what I wanted to illustrate. I wanted to make sure that he understood that and that it's time for him to actually resign, turn in his badge. Jesse, did you, did you get any new answers today and what you've heard? Not really. He tried offering an explanation as to the, uh, the events that took place. And it seems to me like he's backing, backing off from his commitment to withdraw. He found any, any, any responsibility with, this, with the DPS. It seems to me like he's basically, basically backtracking. He's trying to find a way to get out of, out of that commitment that he had made to the families and to the community and to the, really to the world. If this meeting, and it unfortunately seems like it may, if this meeting comes and goes without concrete action, without any more answers, without any more accountability that you're seeking. What do you say to that? I'm disappointed, but I will commit to this. I will tell you this, that, that the spirits of the 21 that didn't make it, my friend Joe Garcia that didn't make it, they will continue to be with us. We will continue to march forth. We may not have, you know, in some ways accomplished much today, but one thing is certain, ma'am, we were there in front of him telling them how we felt, telling them what it takes to get on a car, on a bus, on a plane, to tell the story and the amount of energy. And when you get done saying, making those comments and what you feel like at the end, but it'll never be okay. We will continue this until, the, until our very last day, our last breath. It was five months ago this, this week that horrific tragedy happened that you lost Jackie. And this was and you spoke to this and, and others did as well this is just the latest in a long series of these public meetings that you all have been really forced to stand up in and sit through um to try to get answers and to be heard you talked about that today how i think the word you use is how shattering it is each time what is this like it is it is challenging the first thing that that we do is we find out what's taking place, who's going to be somewhere, and then we find out who wants to go. And, and some people, you know, rightfully so, they 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 discuss it and they need to take a break from it. But you know, basically, you you gather your thoughts and your wording, and you basically get on board and, and you get there and you can see the buildup. Man, we we've taken bus rides, and you can see the laughter. You see the crying, you see all the emotions, people taking a nap, people writing things, all that. And then you go and then eventually you get before the, before the, you know, your speaker, the audience, or, and then you, you basically say it, but you can feel the air just come out every single time. And then in situations like this, when we don't get answers, you know, it's, it's disheartening. But it's something that, again, will continue. It's something we have to do. We owe it. We owe it to the children, man. We owe it to the teachers. We owe it to the family members that were left behind. Yeah. You don't want to have to be here. You don't want to be here at all. These are not the lives that you want to have to be, li the lives you have to be living through and the life you have to be leading at this moment. You'd like to be just back where you were before May 24th, of course. But here, to, here you are. Jesse Rizzo, thank you so much, Jesse, for always coming on. I really appreciate it.